Hello everyone, Scott Myers here, and I wanted to make you aware of the upcoming Self Storage Academy, which is coming to you live, backed by popular demand as the economy begins to open up again. The event will be held May 13th through the 15th at the luxurious Florida Hotel in sunny Orlando, and it's been totally revamped to give you the tools and resources to successfully find, evaluate, negotiate, finance, structure, and manage self storage facilities in our new environment, which as we know, has benefited our industry greatly. There has never been a better time to invest in self storage, and my team and I have been preparing for the opportunities that that the next recession would provide the seasoned and educated self storage investors and that time is now and rest assured we are prepared and want to ensure that you are as well so to make 2021 the year that you launch and grow your self storage business we bungled our award-winning self storage home study course which has just been updated and we packaged it with two tickets to the Orlando Academy along with tickets to our virtual Academy for those who can't make it or just aren't ready to go live at this time and we're making all this available for only $997 that's $2,500 off the list price so grab your seat before they're gone by going to selfstorageinvesting.com forward slash Orlando to grab the bundle and to reserve your spot in Orlando. That's selfstorageinvesting.com forward slash Orlando and we'll see you there. This is the Self Storage Podcast where we share the knowledge and skills from the industry's leading investors, developers, and operators to help you launch and grow your self storage business. I'm your host, Scott Myers, and over the past 16 years, we have acquired, developed, converted, and syndicated over 2 million square feet of self storage nationwide with the help of my incredible team at selfstorageinvesting.com who has helped thousands of people achieve greatness in self storage. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Self Storage Podcast. I am your host, Scott Myers, and this week's guest is DJ Moultrie. Now, DJ is the founder and managing partner of the Black Equity Network, where he focuses on building strategic partnerships and alliances all around the world with the goal of making impact rather than just money through his businesses. DJ is also the founder of the Acquisitions Network, where he serves primarily as a connector in various areas of acquisitions and joint ventures, and is the host of both the How to Acquire podcast and the Black Equity podcast. His background and focus on community collaboration has also led him to a number Number of volunteer opportunities and community leadership roles both in and around his home base in Charlotte, North Carolina. So DJ, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, it was good to uh, connect again and I'm um, thankful we were able to have you here because um, one of the things that we wanted to, I wanted to touch on in our last conversation was just a, a, about the strategic alliances you've made and partnerships. You seem to um, just attract people um, like a magnet wherever you go. So if you would, you know, fill in the gaps in the bio that I just uh, read to everybody here. And then um, why don't you, you know, talk a little bit more about that. Tell us a little bit more about your superpower. Sure. Well, I, in order for me to find my superpower, I feel like every um, every person who has a superpower, they have to kind of be pushed into a corner to where they have to use it. And I found myself in 2017 uh, studying about wealth and what it really means uh, to be wealthy and to acquire wealth and all these great things about wealth and came across this idea of a um, this idea of a racial wealth gap where there's uh, certain individuals within our country who have uh, obtained wealth. And it just so happens to be that a uh, majority of black people are not able to obtain the same levels of wealth, uh, just on average, not everybody, of course. And so uh, as I was studying this, I said, I really wanna document this. I really wanna document by talking to black entrepreneurs and investors uh, in real time, what is going on? So then maybe we can figure this thing out. And so we launched Black Equity uh, Network and Black Equity Podcast to kind of get down to the bottom and then also highlight these entrepreneurs and investors and get their story out. And behind the scenes, as I'm listening to people and, and having these real life dialogues with people, I started seeing a pattern the pattern that I noticed was it wasn't necessarily a racial wealth gap just based off of race. I noticed something called a networking gap because the money that you're going to receive through raising capital or attracting other investors or not even necessarily money, but just relationships overall in business, it's all gonna come from people that you've built a rapport with and a connection with and who you've had communication with. So if you're only speaking to the same type of people all the time, then that's where there's going to be a major gap. And so as we're building out Black Equity Podcast, I said, we gonna, we're gonna have to have a secondary podcast where we can actually bring the gap together. 
which is when we launched uh, last year, How to Acquire Podcasts, where we want to we want to sit down and talk to some of the the best and brightest investors from different sectors, including yourself. We had you uh, on the last episode of our first season of How to Acquire Podcasts. We appreciate you coming through. Um, have the the best and, and brightest minds in the investment space share with us. Uh, you know, their expertise in that particular sector and then connect those people with some of the people on the Black Equity podcast side and figure out, well, how do we put together this networking gap, which to me will then solve not necessarily all of the world's problems, but it will solve the people that are involved in, in these deals. It will solve their problem of being able to get access to the resources, learning how to be resourceful and and um, and building their generational wealth. And so you asked me, well, you know, what is your, you know, what is your superpower? I started noticing that I was a really great connector. Um, I, then I started looking back from my childhood and, and, and like putting it all together. And I said, wow, I've always been good at this. As someone who uh, grew up as an army brat and moved around to new cities every two or three years, I always had to make really great friends and I always had to figure out a way to connect people from one side of uh, the school to another side, you know, these cliques that people have. How do we connect the different cliques and allow, allow there to be harmony? And so I started realizing in my adult life that that skill set had been polished over the years of being able to speak with anyone from any background, really about anything and finding a common ground and leveraging that for business relationships, whatever that may be. Sometimes that's investments, sometimes that's strategic partnerships, uh, sometimes it's borrowing an audience for uh, someone who wants access to a different audience. There's a lot of different uh, ways that we can be resourceful other than money. And so we started putting that to use. And the superpower of being a connector is something I started uh, realizing I need to kind of figure this thing out of what exactly it is so I can use it at its highest potential. And overall, that's where I've uh, really been focusing on the last uh, three to four years. All right, edit point, Richie, sorry about that. I couldn't uh, find the, uh, the button here, so <laughs> I'll just add on to this. So DJ, tell us a, a little bit about what that looks like then, you know, some of the partnerships that you found yourself in uh, more on the acquisition side, um, obviously uh, we're, we're real estate focused around here, mostly commercial, commercial real estate and self storage, but you know, what, what does that look like? Um, especially in, in, perhaps if we could, um, and, and I, I felt the, the same way, but my, the reason why I had to get really good at creating partnerships was um, when I was getting into commercial real estate is because uh, I was broke and my credit was shot <laughs> coming out of the tenant right. of the business. And so um, if I was going to get into commercial real estate and work with more commas and zeros, I knew I had to, to, to partner. So, um, you know, tell me how you took those skills, your skill set and, and parlay that into, you know, getting into the commercial side of real estate. Sure. So the first thing that I had to figure out was where is the wealth? Before I can go knocking on doors and building relationships with people, I want to make sure I'm knocking on the right doors. Otherwise, I'm just wasting years of my life trying to connect people who really aren't an advantage to one another. There's no harmony to one another. There's, no, there's nothing to grow from. Uh, so what I started studying is, like you were uh, hinting at, is commercial real estate is a really great way to build generational wealth. And so I um, started researching some of uh, the people within my network or uh, uh, closely related to our network that I thought would be a really great guest on the podcast. So I found uh, several different investors who came on Black Equity Podcast and just had a regular conversation with them, whether they were publishing a book or developing their own podcast or uh, putting together a program, I found something that would be uh, useful uh, to our audience. And then also would allow us to kind of have an icebreaker to have something to talk about and build a rapport with one another. Uh, so we have our podcast, we have our conversations. And then at the end of the episode, I'm realizing that uh, 
you know, they have a particular skill set in, in something, would they be interested in being introduced to someone who could uh, benefit from their skill set, but then also bring in an additional skill set? Uh, so, for example, there was a, a commercial uh, real estate investor who came on uh, Black Equity Podcast, and he mentioned that he invested in hotels. Well, three weeks prior, I had just interviewed uh, a new up and coming uh, hotel advisory firm, uh, women owned advisory firm, and they were looking to acquire hotels. And it just kind of fell right there. It's like, well, perfect. I know exactly who you need to speak with. So we make these connections. Six months later, probably not even that long, you start seeing things uh, coming out um, through social media that they are about to acquire their first hotel using the resources of the gentleman who was on our podcast. And so sometimes it's as simple as paying attention and, and hearing the signs within the stories that are being told and figuring out, well, how do we bring these two people together or how do we bring these two entities together so then there could be success for both parties. In that situation, both parties win. Uh, this, uh, the, the investor can be passive while the advisory hotel uh, group can go out and find the deal, find everything, get it all done. And then the investor can uh, simply, you know, put the money in or put their investment in however they were, you know, gathering those funds. And so that's just one example of what happens through the power of networking, the power of podcasting. Uh, you know, that's a big part of this is the fact that people want to lend their voice uh, to this conversation. And then also the, the, the power of, uh, to me, trust and relationship building. Uh, overall, those were the things that I believe led to that, that success. And just the last uh, part on that, uh, they are, they, the hotel advisory group is about to acquire their second and third hotel uh, within the next two to three months. I know it's going through their final stages. So I'm really excited to see uh, the growth of their company and their growth of their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, that's that's exactly the way we want to do it. And it's certainly not um, right place, right time. And that, that comes after years of connecting and making those connections and being able to understand and, and recognize who your audience is and, and the asset class that you're working in. So um, good, good, good for you. So tell me, um, you know, we, we talk a lot about partnering and going out and finding people, DJ, to, to work with uh, mostly in the realm of private equity and, and how to position yourself and put yourself in a position to be able to not necessarily rub elbows with, but you know be in a position where um, you are working with some folks that have some net worth. And that typically means that um, they have the, the means and resources, not just monetarily, but also you know they, they understand real estate, they understand the business in general, so that uh, even if that they do have money and you're talking to them about what a joint venture looks like, a partnership, um, or any type of collaboration, you know, they, they get it, they understand that. So where, where are some of the places that um, you have gone or that you would recommend going or how, how do you put yourself out there? How do you put yourself in a position to be found, if you will? In the digital space, I found surprisingly enough, everything is really right there in front of you if you're willing to pay attention to it. So these, these top sites like uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any others, they tend to have these things called groups in them. Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups. If you are very uh, specific of, of your intentions and you join groups that are going to elevate you, you're going to instantly surround yourself with people uh, within those industries, whatever industry it may be, in this situation, we're talking about com commercial real estate, you may go on LinkedIn and find a commercial real estate uh, group to be a part of, or just a real estate group in general, in general to be a part of, and introduce yourself and say, hey, this is what I have of value. If anyone would like to take advantage of this value, I would love to build a relationship with anyone in the group who would love to build a relationship with me. And as simple as that may sound, I just kind of choose the people who choose me. 
<laughs> uh, so not that doesn't always work because uh, sometimes the people that are choosing you may not be who you want to choose you. But overall, uh, when you go into those groups, you offer value, whatever that value may be. For me, it's, hey, we would love to speak with you on the podcast, get your name out there, visibility, uh, gain connections, introduce you to a new audience. One thing that I have found uh, with our audience is a lot of people do not know how uh, to reach the Black entrepreneurs or Black investors. They have no idea how to speak that language and have that conversation. And so when they come on our podcast, uh, whether it be Black Equity Podcast or How to Acquire Podcast, they're being introduced to a new market. They're being introduced to a new investor. And that's instantly going to be very valuable to them because that could cost a lot of money the customer acquisition or client acquisition, that is a huge uh, expense for a lot of people. And we're cutting that expense down by saying, well, here they are. Here's the people that you would want to speak to. Here's the people that could be va valuable to you. Uh, as we build a relationship, here's the access that you're, you're looking for. Uh, so to answer your question, LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, and then inside of those groups, it's kind of like uh, the movie Inception is layers on top of layers where uh, you're a part, you, might, you may bump into someone and say, someone may mention, well, have you joined this mastermind group? Or, hey, um, have you thought about uh, being part of this group over here that's not on any of those social media sites, but it's maybe a membership site somewhere else that may be perfect for what you're doing. So really this, this whole thing is about relationships and asking the right questions and not being afraid to say, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea how to do this. Show me how. And the doors tend to open up that way. Mm -hmm. I would agree. And I, I mean, most people want to help anyways. And um, so, um, you know, if you're investing enough time to ask the question and, um, to, you know, to meet with somebody or to be on their podcast or what have you, it's just expected that um, people want to know a little bit more about you. And so that's what they're looking to do. Um, I would agree. Well, so tell me if you would, DJ, what... Um, what do you see in terms of, you know, if we're talking about collaboration and partnering and, you know, working with other folks, do you see that there is a greater opportunity, you know, as we head into 2021, you know, facing a recession with uh, some challenges that we will have eventually with uh, funding and, um, you know, all, all, all facets, at least that we see, I mean, you know, self storage is going great right now, residential real estate going great right now, commercial struggling mm -hmm. in many um, uh, areas and, and eventually, when we head into the recession and unemployment begins to creep up, we'll see challenges across the board. You know, how does that, how do you approach that with that on the horizon? How do you approach the efforts and the things that you're doing right now to, are, are you looking to increase partnerships, uh, deepen the ones that you have, or, you know, what does the game plan look like as we head into the rest of 2021? Well, you hit it right on the nail. Deepen the relationships we already have. Just to give everyone a, a quick understanding We've been involved in many different industries. And I wrote down a few just to, so everyone can understand. We've been, in, uh, we've been in the art industry, healthcare, hotel investments, uh, venture capital, alternative investments. If you, if you go through all the different people we, we've spoken to, it's at least 30 plus different industries. And so as one industry goes through its downturn, that's okay. I mean, that, that we plan for that. And so it's time to adjust and spend more time to where it's the, the tide is going up. And then as commercial real estate comes back or whatever it may be at the time, uh, then we, we keep uh, you know, building those relationships there. The, the goal is to keep all those relationships going and know that things happens in, happen in seasons, in my opinion, and being okay with the fact that, okay, they're going through a downturn, this actually could be an advantage. Where some people see uh, this as a huge risk, others are going to be jumping in and wanting to invest. It, so it just all depends on the appetite of the investor or the collaborator. Uh, but to answer, answer your second part, it is about deepening the relationship. And one of the best ways that I found that is to be part of what they're doing. So if someone has, we mentioned art, if someone is putting together an art gallery, going to the art gallery and spending time with that person and learning about what they're doing. If someone's talking about alternative investments, going to their firm in Detroit and having those conversations with them. So yes, to me, it's all about deepening uh, the relationship, 
but also making sure that you're not stuck into one specific thing, you're able to be multifaceted and go into different industries at different times and have those tough conversations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Agreed, agreed. So tell me a little bit more also, uh, DJ, about, um, well, let, let, let's touch on maybe the best partnership that you've ever had. The best partnership I ever had is a company called Health and Her Hue. Okay, this is what I call a silent collaboration mm -hmm. where there's an up and coming startup that's specifically designed to um, increase the health education for women of color and, and black women and um, elevate the amount of resources that black women have in the healthcare space. And so this company reaches out we actually had them on the podcast. Uh, the, the founder, Ashley Wisdom, came on the podcast and uh, was talking about her vision, where she wanted to go. And we ended up talking off the podcast. And we went through over 300 different uh, investors that would be interested in a startup like hers. And so since then, uh, we've seen we've seen her win multiple competitions because we pointed we started pointing in the right direction of where are these different places of opportunity. We've seen her win multiple competitions, which then leads to capital coming in. We just witnessed maybe three weeks ago uh, her company being featured on Good Morning America, um, and now we're seeing some other opportunities potentially from some big names coming in saying, wow, you've gotten a lot of traction. We would like to invest as well. And so those are, I always love silent collaborations where our brand isn't on anything, our name isn't really out there. It's simply having a conversation with someone, mind mapping a situation and then stepping back and then allowing that entrepreneur to be the best version of themselves. And uh, kind of being a home base for them. So once they have finished all the media uh, attention, then we can come back and have those conversations of where do we want to go next? And so I'm really excited about Health and Her Hue. I'm excited about um, another company is Epic uh, Collective. They uh, were recently uh, featured on uh, Black Enterprise. Uh, I think we were talking about them earlier far as hotel acquisitions, uh, that would be another one of my favorites. They are featured on Black, uh, uh, Black Enterprise as the two youngest uh, Black hotel investors ever. <laughs> and so, and both of these stories, we were one of the first people to actually capture and document it and then nurture those relationships and see where they go from there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited about both of, mm -hmm. both of those uh, collaborations. Mm -hmm. Good, good. That is exciting. <clears throat> well, DJ, as we um, as we wrap up here, I want to give uh, the folks a, um, a, an opportunity to reach out and connect with you. Um, but one of the um, you know, the um, oh, sorry, Richie, at a point. <clears throat> well, DJ, I want to I want to thank you for your time. But as we wrap up here, you know, this podcast is uh, this episode is a uh, one in a, in a series which um, you, you're familiar with that we've been doing over here uh, since last summer really and uh, that is platform for change and just uh, really you know putting a light on the dark corners of racism in our country and more specifically as it relates to investing in real estate so if, if you would you know you can the platform is yours so you know can you touch on uh, you know an area that you see in investing where racism um, has been difficult has made an uh, an impact, um, and and what that may look like in your investing career or, the, or those that you collaborate with that uh, there may be some challenges that, that we're still facing um, today that folks may not be aware of. I'll say this: I've been thinking about this <clears throat> a lot lately. It was a quote I read. I can't remember who said this, but it said, "Don't trust society; trust your reality." And it took me a little while to process this and then the way that i've interpreted it because i always see these quotes of wisdom as almost like artwork everybody's going to see it however they want to see it the way that i interpreted that quote was 
all the different things on TV and what everybody's saying out in the media is kind of like society. Mm -hmm. So everybody's saying that this is what's happening. Um, this is the current state of the country. And then you'll go outside and you'll meet people of all race, color, background, genders, and everybody loves each other. You know, not everybody, but the majority of people all get along. So mm -hmm. it's this conundrum mm -hmm. of, wait, hold on a second. When I go outside and I meet with people and I talk with people, different backgrounds, we seem to be getting along. But then as soon as I turn on my TV, it says the world is over. People can't get along. All races are all divided. And this is the worst the country's ever been in years. Things like that. And so don't trust society, trust your reality. So when you ask, you know, how does how is racism playing a part? I will say this. When I speak with investors who happen to not be black, and I say, I would love for you to come on the show because I really want to figure out how we can close this racial wealth gap through networking. Typically, once I start mentioning closing racial wealth gaps, people tend to run, people who are not black. People who are not black tend to run whenever the word race comes up. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've seen is not necessarily racism that is causing it, but it's the fear of having to have that conversation mm -hmm. without necessarily the knowledge of, mm -hmm. well, how do I have that conversation? Mm -hmm. yep, so it scares people off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've had that happen three or four times mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. where I thought this person would be a really great person to come on uh, the podcast, have a conversation about their particular sector. And then as soon as I say, well, one of the things that we're looking to do, just so you know, and the reason why I bring it up is because I know that a lot of people that are going to reach out to them are from a certain community. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that, my, first of all, that my name you know, is attached to this. But second, I don't want them to be going towards something that's going to make them uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm speaking with someone and I'm saying, hey, let's close this racial wealth gap, and then they run off and I never hear from them again, that's actually a good thing for me. Mm -hmm. Because I would have hate, I would have hated to, you know, have the conversation, never mentioned it. And then here come 25 black entrepreneurs ready to work with that individual. And then they're not really, they don't have the bandwidth to embrace new cultures and embrace different people. Mm -hmm. And so it tends to happen every once in a while where race does play a, a factor in networking because people tend to gravitate towards who, who they're familiar with, who they can understand. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's not a fact of, well, I hate black people or I hate Indian people or I hate Asian people. It's simply, I don't understand them. Mm -hmm. People fear what they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I think that plays a huge part in raising capital, uh, attracting resources, building alliances, strategic partnerships. You can't be strategic with someone you don't know, trust, and care about. And so to me, that has been one of the huge uh, parts of building a network and building an ecosystem is finding people from all different walks of life who are willing to embrace other people from different walks of life and be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree. And um, <clears throat> I think you, know, you also hit the nail on the head um, sitting in uh, the people that may want to entertain that conversation. I, I think it, it could be twofold. And one of them, um, one reason why people may run in the other direction is that uh, they are, they're just ignorant um, about it. And I, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. It's just that um, I can't have that conversation with you because I, I know nothing about it. I'm unaware of it. I've re, you know I haven't researched, and so therefore um, I don't think I want to engage in it. I think that is one answer. Right. And uh, the second is they don't want they don't want to address it because of you know there's there's going to be some shame um, involved in that as well. And then, you know and in, in, in admission regardless and and knowing that um, you're aware of it and you've probably got some stats behind you, and so <laughs> that it's not a comfortable conversation uh, to have. And, and and I'll be honest with you, DJ. I um uh, was aware of it. I I think I um, also wanted to turn a blind eye to it and didn't think it was as um, anywhere near as um, bad, if you will, or the gap was as large as, as it currently is. And that was mm -hmm. a little surprising. So, you know, as we have 
um, again, shed a light on the issues that we have um, with race and multiple races in this country and uh, the treatment of in various fashions and from credit, the financial markets to jobs to, to pay scale. Um, I was a little uh, I was a little ashamed that, uh, in our country that um, that some of these um, uh, maybe I shouldn't say practices. That's probably not the right word, but just that that there's a gap. That, that, that there truly is inequality and um, and that is embarrassing and um, and, and so that has been unfortunate to, um, to find that out but again the only the only ways that we can make a change in that is um, is to shed a light on it and to bring it to the surface and have a conversation about it so that more people are aware of it and and I and, and I believe um, as you said uh, I firmly don't believe that <clears throat> the racism is, is the issue that people think it is in this country, um, and and that is that fire is being stoked by the media, and um, and that is unfortunate. Like so many things that get blown up because that's how they make money, is by yep. sensationalizing um, the negative um, in anything. That's um, you know if you want to you want to get ratings, um, you got to uh, amplify the negative um, no matter what that looks like. And it's um, it's unfortunate, but that is where that is the basis, and that is the lens through where most of America gets their information and they form their opinions from is um, from the talking head on TV um, or on social media. So, without getting on my soapbox, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to. Uh, certainly, we don't minimize the issues um, that we have around here um, mm -hmm. at all by any stretch. Um, but if you sit down and, and, and you take a look around, um, even, you know, in, in light of, uh, again, you know, the atrocities and the crimes that have been committed over the past, um, um, well, we can't even just say the past year, but several years uh, that are race related. Um, I, I've, I've listened to many folks that have been interviewed, the families of uh, the victims, and they are not as hate driven and as vengeful um, as uh, the media would uh, portray. Um, you know, this is a horrible event that happened and they've lost a loved one. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, they're going to turn around and uh, blame an entire race or an entire country that is uh, based upon this. Uh, there are bad apples right. everywhere. And there are examples on, on, on both sides of that, uh, that not everything has to be turned into and blown up and exacerbated and, and, and 10 x as a race issue, as the media has done. Um, at the end of the day, people still can come together and realize that there's a tragedy that occurred here and, and there's an issue at the heart of it and um, we need to deal with that. But um, beyond that, um, I, I will step off, uh, I guess, my soapbox and stop preaching at this point. But, uh, I, you know, this is a place that that, um, um, you know, the time is now and that's why we haven't um, stopped. Um, this voice is to, to recognize that uh, we have to keep the conversation going if we are going to make a change. And I think right now is the time to do so. And I think it's very powerful what you and your podcast, your network, your um, your family of investors, I think it's very important that you're having these conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, many people are afraid to, you know, uh, kind of put their, uh, their voice to this conversation. I've always found that networking best happens when we're not even discussing business at first. Right. Yeah. You know, finding something that we're, we have a, as a common ground. I don't know, golf, mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. uh, chess, soccer, <laughs> football, basketball, if we can find common ground, that's so important. So uh, thank you for lending your voice and allowing us to uh, find common ground and knowing that we want everybody to have, you know, the right to, you know, pursue a life of happiness, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what color they may be, no matter what gender they may be, everybody to me deserves the right to uh, acquire generational wealth. Mm -hmm. and be able to pass down legacy to their kids but you can't do that if you know you're you're being killed mm -hmm. and so i think it's something that we have to address and pay attention to and not and pretend stop pretending not saying that you're doing it but many people are pretending like it's not happening mm -hmm. and uh that that ends today yeah well, to, to your point, your um, your solution offered, uh, DJ, is one where we can take a page out of um, the Japanese culture in terms of how they do business, and that uh, I know I know many folks that have uh, done business uh, in ja in Japan and with Japanese companies. And you're right; they don't talk about business um, usually. It's a, you come hang out with the board, the president, you know, the whomever, the higher ups, uh, the executive staff um, of these uh, organizations. And if you're going to do business with them, then you spend um, several days um, eating and drinking and visiting their, their business. And you don't talk about business 
um, until the last um, 10 minutes before you board the flight, essentially, or <laughs> hop in the cab or the Uber. <laughs> and they, they want to know who they're doing business with uh, first exactly. more than uh, any, anything else. And I think if we spend a little more time um, studying that model, it, um, uh, I think uh, we, we put a lot of time and effort into who we're going to marry and, and you know, business relationships, uh, large and small, mirror that in, in large and small ways. And so uh, we, you know, that's the way we need to approach it. Um, all the other stuff is just peripheral until we get to the heart of who it is that we're dealing with. Not what they look like, I agree. what they can bring to me. I agree a thousand percent. DJ, how can we find you? How can folks uh, find you if they want to connect with you and talk about mm -hmm. building those relationships, partnerships, and um, how you can connect? Sure. If you want to see what we're doing on social media, you can follow us on <laughs> Instagram at Black Equity Network. Also, if you want to uh, contact us, you can email us at Black Equity Network at gmail.com. Also, if you're interested on the acquisition side, you can follow us on Instagram at Acquisitions Network, and you can email us at howtoacquire at gmail.com. I'm uh, really excited about some new initiatives that are going to be coming in the future. Can't release them uh, yet, but just go ahead and follow us. Stay connected with us and uh, look forward to speaking with you and uh, continue uh, building relationships. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to it. DJ, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much as well, Scott. Thank you. All right, take care. Hey gang, wait three things before you leave. First, don't forget to subscribe to the Self Storage Podcast and turn on your notifications so you never miss another episode. And while you're there, please leave us a five-star review if you like the show. Second, be sure to share your favorite episodes and more via Instagram and don't forget to tag us. And lastly, head to the links in the show description and hit the follow and subscribe button on Twitter and Facebook to get a front row seat as we grow and scale our business and bring you along with us. Take care.